Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a homemade version of salt fermented shrimp called seojat. And seojat is one of the critical ingredients that you need to make delicious kimchi at home. So today's seojat recipe is specifically for my friends that do not live in areas where they could go to a Korean market. All you need is fresh shrimp and coarse sea salt, and that's it. And guess what? Seojat is not only for making delicious kimchi with, but you can use seojat to enhance the flavors of so many Korean stews and soups. So if you love Korean soups and stews, you want to have a jar of seojat in your fridge. 오늘의 레시피 집에서 아주 간단한 새우젓 만들기. 오늘도 여러분들과 영어로 함께 하겠습니다. 음, mm, the homemade one has more flavor. Oh yeah, way more than this one. Hi everyone, this is Helen and welcome to Modern Pepper. 안녕하세요. 마론 페퍼의 헬렌입니다. The ingredient list is also available in the description box below. To make our homemade salt fermented shrimp seojat, we need about 100 grams of fresh shrimp with the tail removed and deveined. And we need a quarter cup of coarse sea salt, preferably, weighing in about 40 grams. And to this, we're gonna add one whole shrimp with the head on. This is just gonna add extra juice and yummy taste to our salt fermented shrimp. Place your shrimp on a parchment paper, then place a plastic wrap over it. And I want you to take a meat tenderizer and with the smooth part, we're just gonna pound our shrimp. Then, using the sharp part, we're gonna do it again. Then using the dull part of your knife, I want you to scrape it off onto your cutting board. And then I just want you to chop it again. Then going the opposite direction, this way. Then again this way. And again this way. So that we don't have any lumpy pieces of our shrimp. So we wanted to have it look like this. We're gonna add our shrimp to a bowl. Then to this, we're gonna add our salt. At this point, all you have to do is just mix it all up. So I want you to mix it well so that our shrimp and salt becomes one. So do this for about good five minutes so that it looks like this. Then what we're gonna do is take our shrimp and salt mixture and add it to our jar. And as you add it, I want you to make sure you pack it down. Pack it down more. Then we're gonna take our shrimp with the head on and we're gonna have the head part facing up this way. And so we're gonna hold the tail and the head together like this. And then we're gonna squish it in there to the bottom. So the head's gonna release a lot of the yummy juices. So once you have that in there, then you put the rest of your shrimp mixture. So our goal is to completely bury the shrimp in the middle like that. Kind of gently pack it down. So I want you to pack it down so it looks like this. Already it's creating its own juices from the shrimp. From here, we're gonna take a spoonful of our coarse sea salt and we're just gonna create a salt layer on top like that and just spread it. So this is our salt top layer that's gonna add another layer of like night night blanket for our shrimp and salt that's gonna become one delicious flavor bomb. Then we're gonna add a small piece of plastic wrap and just gently tap it so it just covers the salt layer that we just put. Then place our lid, seal it tight, and we're gonna let this sit on our kitchen counter for one hour, then place it in your fridge all the way in the back and let it hang out there for one week before you start using. And next to this, look at that. So this one has been in the fridge for one month. This is better, the longer you keep it in the fridge, the better it will taste. 
and after it fermented for a month in the refrigerator, put it in the freezer as you eat through it. And here is a jar that I made a month ago. So let's take a look. As you can see, the salt in the jar has literally melted. So it's like salt liquid, except for the salt that we put on top as our top layer. Take a pair of chopsticks and just mix everything around. It just smells like salty shrimp. So it shouldn't smell funky. I'm only gonna taste a tiny, tiny bit because this is really, really salty, obviously. Very salty but it has that wonderful seafood taste of the sea and shrimp taste, which is what we are looking for. It's the one that we made at home. Mm, the homemade one has more flavor. Oh yeah, way more than this one. This is way better. It's like having really good cheese where at first you're like, ooh, this is good. And then like a couple seconds later, the taste just grows and grows and takes over your mouth. This is how that tastes. The depth of flavor is incredible from this one versus the store-bought one. Now, what would I use this to cook with? I would add just a little bit next time I make my Korean stew, just as a sort of salt agent that's gonna add so much depth and flavor to your broth. I would also mince this up and just add a tiny bit when I make steamed egg, keran jim, or rolled egg, you know, keran mari. That's just gonna make it taste a little bit saltier, but no one's gonna know that it's shrimp taste. That's how little you should add. But it's just gonna add a lot of mileage in terms of this lingering taste that people are gonna be like, ooh, it's really good, it tastes different. Yep, grilled pork belly, no marinade, goes so well together with seoja. You just want to put a little bit on it, not a lot, because this is salty. Just a tiny bit like that, and then you have it together. OMG. This is how we Koreans eat grilled pork belly with seoja. Try it at home. And you could just use it for many other dishes. Just give it a try as like another agent of something salty with a lot of flavor that you want to add to whatever you're making. If you are making kimchi at home and you haven't seen my Kimchi 101 complete tutorial on how to make spicy Napa cabbage kimchi, check it out. The video will be linked here and also in the description box. It's a small batch recipe that anyone could follow at home. Next recipe that I'm gonna upload in three days, it's a vlog on all the Q and A's for anyone that's making kimchi at home. And there's a lot of questions that our non-Korean friends ask on Facebook and all the social media accounts where they have a lot of really, really legitimate questions. I'm gonna try my best to answer all those questions so that you could successfully make kimchi at home. And I am so proud of anyone that makes kimchi at home. I wanna thank you for watching today. And if you enjoyed watching today's video, I wanna kindly, kindly ask you to click on that thumbs up icon and subscribe and hit that notification bell if you have not done so. 여러분 오늘 재밌게 보셨으면 꼭 좋아하는 버튼과 구독 버튼도 눌러주세요. 다음 영상에서 꼭 뵙겠습니다. 감사합니다. All right, folks, I will see you in one of the videos you see right here.